Okay, this is uh, video one, or what I'm calling VLAN 101. Uh, this is just a down and dirty, quick uh, uh, intro to VLANing uh, for anybody who's just basically starting out with VLANing. Um, I do have a couple things up here on the board that I'm going to run through fairly quickly. Um, don't worry, you'll be able to rewind the video, and it is going to be in high def uh, so that you can see everything that I'm talking about. Uh, I just want to basically break down separating network traffic out for VLANing, and I'm going to try and break it down as simple as possible, uh, just because I found out there's a lot of videos out there that are um, basically over most... Uh, people's heads who's just initially getting into uh, understanding VLANing and for people who may not have uh, the best switches on the market right now but do have uh, switches that are VLAN capable. Uh, this scenario is based on uh, layer 2 switching with uh, VLAN, no routing and I will uh, just start uh, with the basics here. Um, what I have displayed on this board is under the assumption that you have three VLANs set up. These three VLANs are going to be VLAN 1, which is your default VLAN that all the switches are configured on. These boxes here, here, and here are my switches, and then we have a computer here and here, and we have a, a VoIP phone here, and another VoIP phone here. Now, what I did in this diagram was um, basically separate the phones from the computers and then change the default PVID on each switch and then allow all the VLANs to be passed in between each switch. The PVID just stands for Port VLAN Identification or ID. Uh, the Port VLAN ID is the default VLAN that a non-aware VLAN device will see. So basically, if you have your standard computer plugged in or any, basically what I would call a dumb device that's just not aware of VLANs, this is the VLAN that it will sit on, the PVID. Now, I will note in the beginning here that if you change the PVID on every single port on all the switches, you will probably lose connectivity to the switch itself, um, i.e., changing VLAN ID settings in the future or um, changing your password on the switch or basically any management of the switch itself if you change all the PVIDs and don't have um, some kind of layer 3 switch or routing in between in, in between the VLAN setup. Now uh, I want to go through tagging and untagging. By, usually by default on most VLAN aware switches, not the most complicated ones, you will always have one untagged VLAN. Usually the untagged VLAN is going to be your default VLAN, your PVID on all ports, and I have the U with a circle around it that shows untagged VLAN, and basically that will be for any device that is not VLAN aware. So any computers that you plug into here, um, any hubs that branch off of this, all that stuff will just get a default PVID of 10 and that traffic will be passed along on whatever your PVID is for any given port. You can set um, each port or different ports and different PVIDs, it's just at discretion. Uh, one instance you would use different PVIDs for different ports if you have a server that needs to pass out DHCP for a specific uh, VLAN, you can, but but it doesn't have a VLAN aware NIC in it. You can set the PVID to 20, your voice VLAN, and then plug your server into that port and have that port pass DHCP request on. But that's a that's a different video. Um, so basically, where we're at is we have a default PVID of 10, and it's an untagged VLAN. So again. Any device that's plugged into this switch that isn't VLAN aware will pass traffic through VLAN 10 untagged. Now, what most people don't get and I feel what's left out of a lot of videos is understanding tagging and how to get a device on that network. Most people don't understand that if you want 
your phone, for instance, to be on VLAN 20, you need to have a device that allows you to specify what VLAN it's on and tag packets on that VLAN. So um, most phones these days have uh, VLAN capabilities and usually if you don't have VLAN capabilities there's a firmware update that you can do for VLANing. So I will run you through what we basically have all these ports one two three four set at on our switch. We have VLAN 10 untagged on all four ports or uh, excuse me we have VLAN 10 untagged on port 1, 2, and 3 and we have VLAN 20 tagged on ports 1, 2, and 3. Now port 4 here is used as an uplink to another switch. Some, Depending upon which switches you're working with, this can be a trunk, it can be a lag, it can be also known as a lag group, or it can just be an uplink. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to go with trunk here um, just to give you a quick understanding of how this works. This trunk on port 4 this was the only one I didn't go over when I was explaining what's tagged and untagged. Because on a trunk port, you need to tag all VLANs. Now by tagging all VLANs, you will be allowed to pass traffic for both VLANs over one uplink, or if you have multiple, um, multiple uplinks in your, in your group, you can you know, pass traffic over all those for both your VLAN 10 and your VLAN 20. So we have it tagged, as you can see right here. We have VLAN 10 and 20, both tagged, uh, specified by my T here with the circle around it. We also have that on our other uplink from port 4 to port 4. We have VLAN 10 and 20 tagged. This will allow me to pass data on VLAN 20 to all three switches. And that would allow this phone to talk to this phone, but it will not allow this computer to talk to this phone. Uh, this this computer is not VLAN aware and what I mean by that is if you go under the properties of this network interface card you will not be able to specify a separate VLAN or make this aware of a VLAN uh, there are network cards that you can get but again that's a little bit higher learning than this video this is just basic understanding of VLAN um, so on all the switches every single port is set to a PV ID of 10 and it's untagged so untagged so that any device plugged in is automatically defaulted to that that uh, VLAN unless it's set at the device to be tagged on on VLAN 20 so when I plug this phone in to any one of these ports it'll automatically say hey um, I've got a VLAN 20 tag and it'll pass that that data across as need be um, there's really not uh, much else. I, I feel that you need to get a basic understanding of the VLAN 101, except knowing that um, you can't communicate between the two VLANs unless you have a layer 3 switch, or better known as a router, or if you have a router in between the two, you can get a layer 3 switch. Um, they're typically considerably more expensive than the layer 2 switch, so if you have a say a $500 switch you probably don't have layer 3 VLANing if you have a thousand dollar plus switch there's a good chance it's layer 3 and you can do some VLANing um, again I'm not talking about some high-end Cisco stuff I'm talking something a, a little bit more affordable for a, a smaller business um, so that's just a basic understanding of VLANing and how to pass data in between two switches VLAN itself is basically creating a, a separate network inside your switch so that you can better control the quality of data. Now, why would you want to do that? The reason you want to do that is because voice packets are, are very, very, very uh, specific. They don't like to be lost and dropped, and, and you, you, don't, you can't really repeat voice packets because that'll cause errors and issues but um, you want to keep the quality of the voice packets as high as possible but uh, quality of service is also something else in another video um, I feel this is a pretty basic understanding of VLANs itself uh, like a couple of definitions PVID port uh, VLAN ID this will be your default VLAN ID for any given switch um, you gotta remember 
90% of regular computers aren't going to have a VLAN awareness. Um, I would probably say 90% of all VoIP equipment will have some kind of VLAN aware and quality of service awareness. Um, any layer 2 switch should have some sort of uh, VLANing or quality of service and you should be able to do some kind of trunking with that equipment as well. Uh, like I said, this is just an intro to uh, VLAN 101, and this is a video by thewudomain.com. If you have any questions or want me to go over something more in depth, post it in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to go over that. Thank you.